QuickBooks Online Purchase Order Form or PO Form. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive, searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive, going down to the option that has the Intuit.com within it, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version and verifying that we're not a robot. Zooming in by holding down control, scrolling up currently at 125% on the zoom in. We're going to duplicate a couple tabs to put reports in as we do every time. But remember first that we are in the accountant view. This is really my preferred view, but we will be trying to switch between the accountant and the business view here just to get a look at those two. Go into the tab up top. I'm going to be right clicking on the tab and duplicate that tab. Going to go to the second tab as it's thinking, right click and duplicate it again. As that's thinking, go to the middle tab. And then we're gonna to go to the reports, which in the accountant view is on the left side, open up the balance sheet. And then we're gonna to go to the right side tab, reports, open up the profit and loss or income statement report. We're gonna scroll up then change the date range. I think the easiest way to do that is just a manual date range since we're working in a practice problem and not real time. So I'm gonna say from 010122, which is January 1st, 2022, as easily typed as possible. And then tab, it should populate 123122, December 31st, 2022. Tab, and look how easy that is. Run it to make sure it's refreshed, up to date, ready to go. Tab to the left. And we're gonna scroll up, do the same thing. I'll do it a little faster this. 010122 tab, 123122 tab, and run that report. Going back to the first tab now, that's the setup process that we do every time. If I hit the plus button, we've been working on the vendor side of things and now the forms that are the data input forms within it. Remembering that vendors specifically for the QuickBooks software means that we're purchasing from the vendors money ultimately going out of our company for goods and services being provided by the vendors. We could do that easily with just a cash based system paying with an expense form, which would be used if you have an electronic transfer, for example, or a check form, same kind of transaction, but now you're using a check number typically. But now we're starting with first the accrual transactions where we had the bill form entered, increasing the accounts payable, and then we paid the bill. Now we're gonna introduce the other kind of component, which is going to be a purchase order. Now this would only be in place if you had inventory. So we gotta get into the, like the restrictions of what's gonna happen if you have inventory. It opens up a world of possibilities. So if you have inventory, notice if I, I'm gonna go back to my flow chart over here to discuss this, just to think about the flow of inventory because note, it's gonna be something that's gonna have an impact on both cycles in terms of the outflow for the purchasing of the inventory and the inflow, because when we sell the inventory, typically that's gonna have another financial transactions we'll have to put in place. Now, when we buy the inventory, we could buy it with a check form or an expense form, a decrease to the checking account in essence, or we can buy it basically with a bill form. Uh, but then we gotta think about our, how are we gonna be tracking the inventory? Are we gonna be putting the inventory uh, or track the units of the inventory in the system of QuickBooks, which would be a perpetual inventory system? Or do we wanna use some kind of periodic type of in inventory system? Or is there some way that I can basically stay on a cash-based system? So the easiest thing to do would be, well, I just wanna stay in a cash-based system, which you could only really do if you had a very small amount of inventory. So if you had uh, like a, a just-in-time kind of systems you you basically buy the inventory and make something and then you sell it very quickly after you purchase the inventory 
then you might just say, okay, I'm just going to expense the inventory as cost of goods sold when I buy it because I'm going to turn around and sell it, recording the sales side of things quite quickly. However, if you have any significant amount of inventory, then you have to deviate to an accrual kind of process as opposed to a cash-based system. Then the question is, do I want to track the inventory in QuickBooks or do I want to track the units of inventory outside of QuickBooks and just the dollar amounts in QuickBooks? That would be a periodic system, the latter being you track outside using like Excel for the units that you're purchasing. And then you basically do a physical count maybe of the inventory at the end of the night, week, month. And then you do a periodic adjustment to your uh, journal entry in the system of QuickBooks, which isn't tracking the units of inventory, but just the dollar amount. In other words, every time you purchase inventory, you increase inventory. And then every time uh, you sell inventory, you're not recording the decrease of inventory with the sales form, but instead we'll do a periodic adjustment based on the physical count you do nightly or weekly or monthly. Then the full service system would be that you're going to track the units of inventory within the system, which means you've got to make sure to use the items in the system, turn on the items to track the inventory. So now whenever you record a purchase of the inventory, it will not only record the inventory in the account, but also the units of inventory that you have. And when you have a sales form, it will decrease the uh, inventory account and the units at that point in time. So. The other added step we have in there with the inventory is if you're just purchasing inventory and you're basically having to pay for it when you order it or something like that, then you have a financial transaction taking place when you buy it. So if you bought something from Amazon or something and you have no special sway, then you're going to have to pay for it when you buy it. That's what we have to do individually when we buy something online, which means you basically own the inventory at the point in time that basically you're you're purchasing the inventory because you paid for it at that time so that in that case you would basically enter a transaction when you made the payment basically when you issued a check form or a transaction for the inventory but if you're buying inventory such like uh in bulk or something like that to be manufactured possibly overseas in like from like china or something you're having them build something and then ship it to you. Sometimes you have the leeway to be able to request the inventory before actually uh, paying for the inventory. So in that case, the purchase order is just a request. That makes the purchase order uh, somewhat unique, not completely unique, but pretty. it stands out as being something that's, that's not recording a financial transaction when you do the data input. The other one is also the estimate that doesn't record a financial transaction because what you're doing here is just requesting the inventory you haven't paid for it and you haven't received it clearly yet you're going to say i would request this inventory they're going to send it to you and then you can actually check it so you can imagine getting the box of cups if you ordered cups from china or something custom made and then they send it to you and you pull out the bill that is in the box of cups that's when you got billed that's when you have the inventory that's when you can enter the bill or pay the bill at that point in time. So we still need to track the purchase order, but it's not something that actually records a transaction within it. So I'm going to close this back out. And so if we think about that in terms of, of the QuickBooks system, the order of the process would be going, I'm going to make a purchase order. Then I expect to receive a box of whatever I purchased, the inventory. And that means I'm going to typically be uh, entering a bill or I can pay for it you know, at that point of time, if I enter a bill, then I'm going to later pay the bill with, in essence, a check form. Now, if we're tracking inventory within the system, which we'll typically be doing if we're dealing with purchase orders, you also have to make sure that you have purchase orders basic, or inventory tracking turned on. So you can go find that in the cog drop down. And then if we go into the account settings in the account settings and we go to the sales tab on the left hand side, and then we go down to the products and services here within the products and services track a uh, quantity and price rate track inventory quantity on hand so we're basically tracking the inventory within the system so if i close this back out then when i purchase the inventory 
we're going to also have to lay down kind of those foundational items which have already been set up here but just to understand how you you'd have to have those laid out those are going to be the, the things that we're purchasing the inventory units so that the system can track the units we're purchasing and not just the dollar amount of the items we're purchasing so for that we can go down to the sales area which is kind of like i would think of it as basically the revenue cycle and then we're going to go into the products and services which are kind of like the fundamental underlying things which isn't really part of the revenue cycle particularly but those are the things we sell so you can kind of see why they would put it uh, in here and then we have the items that have been set up on down below so the items are going to be the units that we're going to be you know uh, putting together by item now these are the inventory items which have the tracking of the units that will be involved with them so we're going to make something with these kind of uh, uh inventory items or possibly we'll set up another inventory item as we go so we need those things kind of set up so i'm going to open up uh the the window here so let's go back to the dashboard and now let's just go to the drop down up top and just note there's a couple ways we can you know get into the purchase order we can go into the purchase orders right here or we can go into the expenses area because this is basically the vendor cycle on the expenses area and you can go into here and then you've got your transactions on the drop downs and you've got the purchase orders you can go into particular vendors for example and choose the particular vendor uh, such as whoever we're going to be sending the purchase order to and then new transaction and a purchase order so let's just do ours from the drop down up top and we'll set up a, a new one as we go so i'm going to say in the vendor area we've got a purchase order I'm just going to pretend we're going to set up another one. I'm just going to call it AAA again for the vendor. So it'll be at the top of our list. So it's just going to be uh, the AAA that we'll be purchasing from. That's all I'm going to be populating with at this time. I'm going to save it. And then if we're going to email it to them, of course, we would then need the email address to be populated. And then if we were going to send the purchase order by email, we will, of course, need the email address, but I'm not going to populate one here. The mailing address is going to be populated from the information for the vendor. We didn't add one, so we only have the name here. The ship to notice that we've got the shipping address down below going to our company here. So the information or the goods that we are purchasing hopefully will be shipped to us, but it's possible that we might want them shipped directly to a customer, in which case we can choose a customer on the dropdown, which will then change the shipping address, as we can see here, if the customer has an address related to them. And then we've got the purchase order date. We've got the uh, ship via uh, to populate if we so choose. We've got tags, which we're not going to be adding. And then we've got our two items down below, which are similar to what we saw on the bill form. The first one, remember, I've got the two triangles collapsed at this time, is where we usually do the data input if we're going to be assigning something directly to an account. In this case, we might think like inventory account. Now, generally, we, we wouldn't do that usually with a purchase order because one, the purchase order isn't going to be uh, having any transaction related to it. You'll remember it's just a request form. But even when we use the purchase order to populate the bill, if we're going to be tracking the inventory on a perpetual inventory basis, uh, then we're not going to we're not then we're not going to want to use this category. We're going to want to use the item category. However, possibly if we're using a purchase order and we have like a, a periodic system that we're using, meaning we're not tracking the inventory on a unit by unit basis in QuickBooks, but on uh, Excel worksheet or something outside of it then maybe we would want to assign it just like to the inventory account here, for example, and then pull it over when we received the inventory, created the bill from it. But usually if you're on a perpetual inventory system, you'd have to set up your items. So let's think about making an item as we go. We'll talk more about items later, but these are the inventory underlying units of things that we're going to be producing, that we're going to be purchasing now. And let's just call the first one. I'm going to hit the drop down and just make a new item and so we'll make a new item it's got to be an inventory item i'm just going to call it inventory item one i'm going to copy that we're not going to have an sku it's going to be a category uh categories would be if like we had we had a group of guitars versus basses or drums or something like that and we want to have all those types in a particular category so they're organizing our items the initial quantity on hand will usually be zero 
because we're going to be purchasing them unless you're first starting the file. I think we have to put a date here. So I just put like the beginning of the period reorder point. I'm going to say zero, meaning when the inventory gets down to zero, you know, then we're going to reorder. You can remind us there. Okay. So the uh, inventory asset account, when we actually purchase the inventory, not with the purchase order, because this is going to record nothing. But when we pull that over to the bill or check form to pay for the inventory, it's going to increase the inventory account. And then the description that'll be on that, I'll just call inventory item one. This would be the description of what we're purchasing. If we sell guitars, we might be purchasing like a guitar. The sales price, not the purchase price. This is not what's gonna be populated on the purchase order, but the sales price, what we're gonna sell it for with an invoice or sales receipt, let's say it's 250. And then the income account, not the account that's gonna be hit when we do the purchase order, nothing will be. This won't be hit when we do the bill or the check form. It'll be hit when we sell the inventory with an invoice or sales receipt. So you can see the inventory spans both the purchase side and the sales side. Sales tax, we'll talk more about sales tax at a future point. Uh, but if that's applicable, we'd have to have that applicable. And then we're going to say the purchasing side, same uh, description, the cost. We're going to say we buy them for $100. That is what's going to be populated on the purchase order, even though not recording anything. And it will pull over to the bill or check form that we'll use to actually purchase the inventory once we receive it. Cost of goods sold is going to be the expense account that will be hit not when we enter the purchase order, not when we enter the bill or check form, but when we sell the stuff with the sales receipt or uh, the the invoice. And then we could select a preferred vendor, which I'm just gonna say is the AAA vendor we set up and let's save it and close it. So there we have it. So let's say that we buy like five of these. So we're gonna say buy five of those are gonna be bought at uh, $100 each, that's gonna be $500. Now we could put a customer here. Normally you would not because, or, or it would depend. I mean, if you were buying inventory that's all like the same kind of stuff, and you're just buying a bunch of units of the same stuff, you probably wouldn't put a customer because you're not buying it specifically for a customer. You're just stacking your inventory that you hope to sell to just about anyone and they're all the same. But if you're buying something that is custom, like a custom guitar that has a specific color for a particular customer, then you might wanna put the customer in. Not because the vendor needs to know about it on the purchase order, but because when you receive the goods, from the vendor, you want to know who you bought the stuff particularly for so you can turn around and create the invoice or sales receipt. Now we could of course add multiple lines down below so I can, I, I'm just going to add like another one of just something generic that they already set up. And we could have multiple lines that we're purchasing from the same vendor, different inventories we're purchasing from the same vendor. We could delete these transactions or lines if we need to. We can adjust the ordering of them like so if we need to and uh, so those are those and we can add lines if we need more lines we can clear the lines if we need to do that down below we have your message to the vendor so if we want a message to the vendor we got it here memo internal uh memo this is not going to be on the thing that's going to be external you've got your attachments if you need anything and the history you can, you can cancel it you can clear it you can print it let's look at the printing of it the data input form looks different than, of course, the printed form, which looks like this. So now we've got our line items here and you can see the little high. That's the that's the little message we put on the memo on the on the PO. The memo is not here, however, because that's internal. So let's close this out. We've got make recurring. So if this was a recurring purchase that we want to add up and automate, we could do that. More has copy. So if it's a complex purchase order and we want to start with it, copy it over so that we can just make the tweaks necessary for the new purchase order. We could do that, delete it, add history. We could save it. And then on the drop down, we could save and new and, and uh, save and send. So if we're going to send it, we would need the email address to do so or save and close. Now, what's this going to do to the financial statements? That's a trick question because it's nothing. It's not going to do anything, even though it looks like it should, because it has a number down here, but it's not gonna because we didn't actually purchase anything. We didn't spend any money. We didn't get the inventory yet. It's just a request. Imagine it going to China or something for them to manufacture something, and then they're going to ship it over to us. So 
let's save it and close it and check it out. So we're going to say save it and close it. I'm still going to have to track it, but it's not going to hit the financial statements. So the next thing we expect to happen, if I hit the drop down, we made a purchase order, ordering something, let's say from China, they're going to ship it to us with the bill in it, right? Their bill, right? The thing they're charging us for that we could enter on our side with a bill when we get it or a check form or an expense form. That's what we expect basically to happen next time or next in the lineup of series of events. But to search or track the purchase order, we could go to the expenses tab down below. And then if I go to the expenses up top, this is where we can track all kind of the activity here and I could filter these transactions. You can see the purchase order up top. These are all the transactions for, you know, the, the money going out, the vendor cycle type of thing. I can select the drop down. I can go to uh, just the purchase orders, apply that. So here's all the purchase orders. I could hit the drop down and say that I would like to see the purchase orders that are open, only the open purchase orders. And so there's our AAA one, or I can look for the purchase orders that are closed. I can go to the closed purchase orders and look at the closed purchase orders that way. So that's one way that we can track and sort the purchase orders that we expect to be receiving inventory from like China or whatever that we order from in our warehouse. Now, if I go to the vendors tab, we can also go to the vendors tab and they've got a nice little sorting tool up top for the vendors. And I can go to the two open purchase orders here. So we've got those two items. And then I can, I can clear that if I want to. I can go into the particular vendor. So if I go into the particular vendor, I can imagine that I have now received a box of stuff that I ordered, for example. I know it came from AAA vendor, for example. And then there's, there's the purchase order. Now, once the purchase order is here, if I didn't get the stuff, I could say I would like to send it here possibly. I can copy it to a bill. That would be the next step we would kind of expect to happen. We're gonna we're gonna take the purchase order and say that we have uh, received it. We're gonna make a bill from it. So in other words, the box of stuff inventory that we got from China or whatever that we ordered is gonna have a bill in it. And we could take that bill and, and generally enter it in as usually a bill into our system and that will record the inventory pulling over the data from the purchase order into the bill. So that in essence is what we're gonna do next time that, or the next step would be to, to get the inventory and pay for it. That's when there would be an impact on the financial statements. So we'll continue with that process next time. So I'm gonna maximize this again or, or un hamburgerize it. <laughs> And let's look at the, let's hit the drop down on the cog up top and just look at the business view and take a look at where the stuff is located in that view. So if I go to the business view and I go back up to the get things done homepage or uh, uh, the homepage here, get things done, we still have the same plus button. So clearly the purchase order, we could still go to the purchase order here. And then we've been going to the uh, get paid and pay area and then we're gonna go down to the pay area. That's where we can find the vendor information and we could search by the purchase orders here. Now the transactions, uh, they put in a little bit different location. So those are gonna be down in the bookkeeping area. And then we got the transactions up top. And then I'm gonna go to the expenses, which expenses mean, or I would interpret it as all the forms you can sort by in essence that are part of the uh, expenses or money going out cycle. So I can search for that. And so we had all these, so that's a useful place to go. And you could think about, again, this expense tab as kind of sorting all, you could sort all the transactions, the types of forms that are related to, in essence, if I hit the plus here, related to, in essence, the vendor side of things, where at the end of the day, we expect money to be going out for goods and services that we are purchasing. So next time we'll get into then imagining that we we receive the goods and what's the next step we're going to get a bill from them and in the box of inventory stuff that we received and we can use that purchase order possibly to make a bill or possibly go directly to a check or expense type of form